All right. Everybody, we got started in just a minute here. Make sure everything's synced up. All right, Kagers, I'm going to give you for a spy end of the day price 388.04. As I said, plus or minus fifty dollars should give me a pretty good buffer. I was going to like throw down to do like push-ups for X ten cents plus or minus, but it you didn't get me get let me get on the mic before I posted it. So the little promotion of our little fitness mini community we have in the chart, guys. All right, I think we're good everywhere. So let me do one more check on trading view. Yeah, it looks good to me. All right, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the midday. Nope. Welcome <laughs> to the uh, weekly wrap up show. My name is Jason. It's March 17th. And what we're going to do today is take a look at the markets, close out the week, and get an idea of what we might expect going into next week. We're going to have an opportunity to check out some tickers on uh, some larger time frames, maybe check out some swing trades, see what you guys want to look at. We have 45 minutes or so of chart time. So if you have a question or if you have a ticker, you can post them there. I see my friend Adam wants to look at tick and ADD, even though he knows all about those. But I love those things, so let's take a look anyway. All right, first of all, let's go through the indices. We'll check out the dollar, we'll check out some commodities, we'll check out gold and Bitcoin and why those guys are popping off. And then we're also going to take a look at uh, quite a few tickers. So uh, before we do, let me do my shameless self-promotion that I keep forgetting to do every time. This is why my lovely, oh, that's not it. My account uh, just hasn't grown a heck of a lot because you know what? It's been here for about a thousand years and I just haven't done much with it. Uh, so give me a follow. Chart Guys Jason on Twitter. We post some fun little setups every morning. John helps me out and we take a look at bulls and Bull and bear cases. Today we did riot. In our bull case, we said, hey, you know what? We actually want bulls to see a little weakness out of the gate. We want them to hit, get down and get to about the 780. What did we say? The 721 level? Yeah. And we ended up getting to 718. So nice little level. Yeah, that was a 727. I'm trying to remember now. We were looking at the hourly time frame. We said, you know what? Bulls, we want them to push back a little bit. We want to see a little bit of selling pressure. And our bull case was, let's get down into the 721 range, ideally holding 727 and see a flush. What did we get? We got our five minute oversold. We're looking for that back burner. It kicked on and we have seen the five minute bulls. Thanks uh, mostly to uh, the massive move that we're seeing in Bitcoin. But bull and bear cases for our tickers, expected volatility uh, every morning. We take a look at a couple of things. So give me a follow if you like that sort of stuff, okay? All right, now let's check out our indices. So we have uh, ES, which isn't giving us a ton of clarity, but we do have a lot of clarity on NQ as to why today's pullback happened. And we have YWM and RTY both giving us some really nice clarity as well. So let's start with the ES. Uh, on the weekly time frame, we are still in a weekly uptrend, but we are at a point now where we would definitely like to see the bulls coming in to establish this weekly higher low. The more aggressive, and read that the higher we are over a former support level, the more likely we are to see a higher low and a higher high. The fact is we pulled back quite a bit from this 4208 level. And if we do our fancy fibbies, which uh, as you know, I don't use that often. Right up here, fancy fibbies, you'll see why. 50% mark is all I really care about for these guys. And we are well under that level. When we cross that 50% level, it means that we are more likely to see a lower high on any bounce as opposed to staying above or in the area of 50, looking for a higher high over 4208. So bulls still have some opportunity here on the weekly time frame. We know that. I like the high volume bar. I'd like to see a little bit more commitment to the upside to end the week. But we are still looking for a weekly higher low until we are over or under 3788. For a little bit more clarity, we can go to the daily time frame. In this case, we're in a daily downtrend, so that changes our perspective a little bit. We need to see daily higher low over 38, 39, 25. And we know on the four hour time frame, we still have an uptrend. So bulls are in control here. So a little bit of conflict, uh, somewhat a lack of clarity. Definitely still have some levels left for the bulls, but this today's sort of weakness is what gives us a little bit of cause for concern, especially when we combine those factors with uh, what gold is doing, what Bitcoin is doing, what the sentiment in the market is about banking and international banking instability. And especially when I look at things like 
our, our NQ and our, our Russell in their nice little um, setups. So you're actually going to give us a little clarity heading into next week, and we'll get to those in just a sec. But yes, four hour time frame. Let me go make sure all of my levels are good. This is usually where uh, my friends tell me something is wrong. Kagers went all in on. <laughs> okay, buddy. Dude, I hope your wildest dreams come true. I really do. That'd be amazing. But then again, you going all in is probably like $10, right? So, no big deal. Uh, okay. Um, hello, Christoph from the island. Welcome, Stan. The volume on trading view for futures. My friend, if you think I am Dan, you have uh, made some mistakes. And you know, I actually had a new member come in and, and tell me that they asked if I was Dan's brother because we looked alike. And I had to screenshot it and I sent it to him. I said, sorry, Dan, turns out you're hideous. Uh, but no, I, I'm not Dan. Not Dan. Yes, four hour time frame. Looking for those higher lows. Bulls in control the four hour daily time frame. It's for the bears and the weekly. You know what? We're trying to hold on here, but we're really trend neutral. We have the opportunity for weekly higher lows. We just haven't done it. It's okay, Christoph. It's all good. Just making a joke at myself. Okay, so yes, right? We're looking for that weekly higher low. What can we gain? What insight can we gain from the other indices as to the likelihood of that weekly higher low being set? Well, we have to look at these big four indices and consider them all in conjunction with each other, right? So we go to our NQ. Our NQ on the weekly time frame has set a weekly higher low. We dip below that level and then we manage to get a really solid push. So that is really good for the bulls. We talked about that yesterday in the afternoon show where we had a key level. And this is an example of dipping below a level, seeing a lack of follow through no more sellers, and then a significant amount of interest. So it's almost like a slingshot. You have your key level, you get to pull below that slingshot, and once you dip below a support level and there's no more selling pressure, that's a big sign. Cross back over your low or your support level, things tend to pick up. So we saw that on QQ, you know, on the NQ, when we lost that weekly low, we barely dipped below that level and saw a lot of follow through. So on the weekly time frame, NQ looks great. If we go back to our February 6th candlestick and our February 13th candlestick, the upper wicks here showing that selling pressure, and then we draw that horizontal ray out, look how close we got to that level today. So a lot of historical resistance, a lot of selling pressure up at this level. I'm not really surprised to see the four hour bulls hitting overbought or near overbought conditions and pulling back from this. So today, just looking at the NQ chart, this doesn't look too bad, does it? We are due for some daily consolidation. The four hour time frame has been consolidating. We have a little four hour inside bar. We still have EMA 12 control. We don't have a nice trend to speak of yet because technically this is a lower low. You may construe this as a four hour higher low, but ultimately we're looking for bulls to maintain support over EMA 12. And a little bit of consolidation today on this independent chart does not look too bad. Uh, okay. On the hourly time frame, EMA 12 holding, so bulls still in control of the EMA 12. And the simple rule is, if we hold EMA 12, bulls remain in control. We're looking for 15 minute higher lows. We'd love to get that. And <laughs> we'd love to see the bulls get over this 12, 18, 88 level. Is this a good level for us to springboard up and take out that level and try to close the weekly? We could do better. We can do better because the four hour time frame is close to overbought. We do have room for higher lows and it is far better to hit a resistance pattern casually than it is to hit it straight up because we use the same amount of force. Actually, let me correct that. The amount of force that we would need to get to that resistance is better spent collectively sideways so that we can break the level. Hold on, what's going on? Essentially, we just don't want to be too exhausted. And right now we are overbought. Bulls are exhausted in the four hour time frame. They need to consolidate. We'd love to accomplish a goal and still have some gas in the tank. When we go sideways, establish higher lows and have a confirmed trend with confirmed supports. And then we break a level, we're more likely to be able to maintain those gains and hold on to that level. Okay? So 12, 18, 12,818, 12, 50 cents is the goal for the bulls on multiple time frames. So weekly close, the daily close, a four hour. Key resistance overall, hourly bulls still holding on. 
All right, so YM, another indication that we are looking for pullback from today's high was the fact that we have this range of volume. So I'm gonna delete that. We're getting our higher highs, no follow through, lower lows, no follow through. So we are in a balanced range. When we pull that fixed volume profile, where do we pull back from? We pull back from this value area high, just getting over that 32,572 level. So when we see that happen, just like we saw with QQQ with XLF, getting above or below a key range and seeing a reversal in the area where we expect to see counter volume and the desire for the market to stay in that range, uh, the more likely we are in balance. So this is really the goal for a lot of the market sellers, right? They want to stay in this range. So what they'll do is they'll get down below, they'll buy that up, they get back up, they have a nice area, they'll start applying selling pressure into the excitement. Because if we're playing with breakout traders who are looking for a breakout over that level, they're going to be trying to hit some stop buys. They know that. The algorithms know that. The sellers know that. So they start entering short positions, overwhelming the buyers that may be here and pushing the price back down. And when we get back down into an area that they're comfortable with, they'll start buying to cover and pushing the price back up. And the longer they can keep that little game going, the more benefit it is to them. Eventually it does need to crack though. But until it does, we have our little fixed range volume profile that we can use to determine more likely than not likely areas of reversal. All right, so we're back down in one now. We're seeing a upper and lower, <laughs> couple of lower wicks. Um, it's a very broad trend. Uh, I would not be calling that an hourly trend, certainly four hour higher lows with 15 minute bears in control. Trying to battle it out right now. Do we have, yeah, I thought perhaps an EQ, but no, 15 minute bears, reconfirming the trend with a lower low here. Bulls need 32.209. So to summarize, our position so far on the week, looking for a weekly higher low with our hourly and four hour trends, looking for higher lows, but our daily in a downtrend. Our NQ pulling back from a key level, still holding in the hourly time frame. Ideally, we'd see a four hour higher low and a YM in balance, looking at a low as well, trying to stay in this range. Bulls needing to apply some pressure and the 15 minute time frame is trend neutral with our lower lows. No, nope, no, it's not trend neutral. Keep. For some reason, this lower wick just makes it look like there's a, this looks lower than that for some reason. Playing my tricks on my eyes here. All right, downtrend to the 15. Okay, let's go look at the RTY. So this is where I'm looking for the most clarity on uh, the four hour time frame. If we go to the weekly, the weekly time frame is not giving us very much. We're down in this range again. We're not really range trading but range trading does need to start somewhere. And that would be something like, okay, well, we hit a low, back up to a high. We don't really know what happens until we get into that mess. We start playing with that volume profile. But we have 1730.8, we've dipped below that level. And what we've ended up doing after that dip is seeing that low, and then we get into this equilibrium. That's playing out very nicely in the four hour time frame. We've been watching this one for a little while. So one, two, three, four, five points of contact now looking for a four hour higher low over 1729.7. Ideally, we'll come back up and continue this equilibrium. If we can get our, our ES and our NQ to start playing along a little bit, they're in a good position to do that, right? We're looking for the, uh, the where is it? The four hour consolidation and higher low hourly time frame YWM trying to change the trend. Get a four hour higher low back up into balance itself. What we don't want to see is the Russell breaking this equilibrium bearish. If we see that, that's going to be a daily bear flag-esque breakdown. And we're going to be looking to weekly support as our next target, uh, which is down at 1643. So all eyes on the Russell equilibrium right now. Go to the 15 minute time frame. We have that very similar lower low with lack of follow through. Bulls need 1754 in order to change trend. At third, 326, you talked about why traders like a range. Uh, yeah, let me get through tickers and the rest of this, and then we will uh, see if we can expand on that a little bit. All right, um, what's next? All right, Adam wants to look at tick and ADD. Sure, let's do it. All right, Adam, ADD, here you go, buddy. It is pinned at minus 2000. 
which means it's a bearish supportive day. We're seeing volume coming in and here's your tick. On average, we're spending a lot of time below zero. It's not collectively very crazy though. Where'd my cumulative tick go? Let's try to reload this bad boy. Load, please. I don't know why it just disappears, but it has. Either way, it looks like we would have a cumulative tick that would slowly be building to the downside. Our EMA is mostly under our zero line, but we are seeing a lot of chop back and forth. So all in all, the internals today are more supportive of the bears than they are of the bulls. Price overall is trending down. We'll look at the same thing over here for our QQQ. QQQ volume trending down. We have been pinned around the minus 2000 mark, collectively building bearish on the day. So overall supportive of the bears. Okay. All right. Uh, let's continue along the dollar. So the dollar on a daily time frame, we have our high, we have our low, lower high. So we have support that we'll be looking for the bulls to hold on to and ideally try to maintain something. Come on now. Over 103.43, a weekly time frame. We are looking for weekly higher lows, having just knocked over this area resistance, but we did not do it in a very spectacular fashion. Go back and, up, well, we don't even, we do need to go back, but how we do it is what I'm trying to say, apply horizontal ray. So there's our high, we peaked over, peaked over, go back here, former area of resistance. So we are in a zone of control, as I like to call them, where we have one side and we have another side demarcated by that red line. And bulls, in order to advance, need to close consecutively, concisely, confidently over the 105, 631 level. That's our weekly time frame. Again, daily time frame is in control of the bears with lower highs and lower lows now. Four hour, not giving us a ton of clarity with this kind of protracted, janky little trend. So what we'll be looking for here is a sign of strength and a four hour trend change. It's almost quasi hourly we can see how close these candles are together we expand that a little bit we can see a little bit more clarity with our highs and our lows so right now hourly bears four hour bears daily bears in control on the weekly time frame bulls in control it's a lot of counter trading here and bulls really need to step in in order to start changing these trends toward that higher low on the weekly right now bears control most of the time frames on the dollar all right take a quick break to see all right we want to look at bitcoin now i was gonna do commodities but yeah let's take a look at the cryptos first all right bitcoin weekly time frame so uh look at bitcoin first of all and look at gold and then look at the vix so the vix is holding on the daily time frame not particularly crazy strong but we are over 25 and the vix if you don't know is an indication of implied volatility it's not necessarily fear it's how much volatility do option traders seem to expect in the coming 30 days when we are spiking up it is a crazy amount of volatility a general rule is 20 and under is sort of stable um higher than 20 more volatile we have spent significant amount of time up in in quite high ranges uh, so all in all this is still relatively stable it's not it's more than we have been used to um, but it is not crazy unheard of okay so volatility begets what volatility begets fear uh, or that's the assumption i should say um, but what we need to do is wonder why if we are afraid and money is flowing out of the stock markets where is it going well it appears to be going to these safe havens uh, gold and perhaps um, a lesser safe haven. I don't really know. Bitcoin. All right, so that's why we are seeing this spike up. Let's go look at where we're going. Okay, Bitcoin on the weekly time frame. So if you are a long-term Bitcoin holder and this is not your your first winter um, days like today, they make you feel pretty good, All right? We don't really. Let's let's step aside and, and say we don't care why. We're up. We just like to see the green. On the weekly time frame, what does Bitcoin have for resistance? Not a lot. So we're going to be looking at psychological levels. Anytime we get into a thousand, so 28,000, 30,000 in particular, 32,000, those are going to come into play a little bit. Right now, our psychological level to be concerned about with Bitcoin is 28,000, but we don't have any really 
any weekly resistance up until that point. And we know that we're going to be chewing through some relatively limited overhead because look at the, the where we fell down here, limited support to become new resistance. And here, there's a 28,000 level formerly acting as a support, so very likely to act again as a resistance. Beyond that, we have to look at technical reasons for pullback. Those being overbought conditions. We'll look at RSI. So we can look at RSI resistances. Last time we got an RSI resistance before the price pullback and interacted was at 1946. Right now we are just above uh, overbought conditions. So daily consolidation is not unwarranted. And we do have the luxury of this tiny little daily higher low at 23,931. So four hour time frame looking great. Looks like we have a multiple inside bars in the four hour time frame. So if we see that break bearish, we'll be looking for flags given the strength that the bulls have seen. In fact, some may construe this as a flag already, but ultimately we have a four hour inside bar. We have 24 minutes left in this inside bar. So we'll be marking that high out We're very close to it. It's very likely to adapt and move beyond. So let's also pay attention to our other levels right above us. Ideally, when an inside bar setup like this forms up, we want to knock out one of those resistances and just see more steady buying pressure. Knocking out anyone who has short positions in this area, forcing them to cover or at least consider covering, and then getting more excitement into the market. Right now, the bull volume looks really nice. We're holding steady, a lot of interest here. And what we want to see are more conditions like this where we have big volume on the way up and limited volume on the way down during consolidation. So all in all, pretty steady for the bulls. Daily time frame is extended, four hours extended, hourly time frame. So we're getting some overbought uh, RSI stack alerts. 50 minute time frame, just creeping up here. So what we'd love to see, best case scenario for the bulls, 15 minute bull flag consolidate, lock that four hour time frame candle in. I like that volume. And then seeing a bull break to follow. Either way, we have this four hour inside bar. And if we do not get it, uh, a four hour inside bar here, we still have that one to rely on. So bulls in control, no signs of slowing down yet. If we are looking to take our profits, we are considering the fact that we have stack overbought conditions, meaning again, that we are overbought in multiple time frames. And when you're overbought, it's not a great time to scale into a long position, right? Fear to fear trade to safety seems to be in bonds too. Yeah, but that's more typically not people who are buying Bitcoin or selling stocks to buy gold stocks, right? More typically anyway. All right, so let's go take another look at gold or uh, another fear name gold because I can see Christoph's asking about this one in the chat. Um, then we'll get to our tickers because I've spent a lot of time. Unless you guys, someone wants to look at oil uh, we can do that as well, but I can see I owe a few ticker requests. All right, gold. Look at gold on the monthly time frame. 20,075, 20,070, big historical levels for us to be watching. And ultimately, we are not that far away from that level. If you think about it, let's go to the daily time frame. How far are we? Based on what we've done over the last week, we can get there in, an, in another week or if we pick up pace. The question that we're asked right now in the YouTube is, is this unsustainable, right? The gold rally seems unsustainable. What do you think? Well, yeah. Anytime you get into overbought conditions, you need to start considering how sustainable can we apply this pressure? Now, you also need to consider what type of um, conditions you're in. When you're in massive FOMO breakout or fear-inspired FOMO uh, buying pressure, Lots of times RSI just goes out the window, right? And we're almost at the point now where we're gonna see that on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin continues to just grind and if gold just continues to grind and we keep seeing buying pressure despite these overbought conditions, despite these, these RSI levels triggering algorithmic selling and short sellers wanting to, to get on these extreme levels, once they decide that, nah, we're not gonna do that, then it's in complete control of the bulls. Then they can apply as much pressure or as little pressure as they want without any opposition. The short seller is going to be waiting for that uh, that momentum to just stop and dissolve. 
And once that happens and that FOMO sort of subsides, that's when they can really get the best possible short positions. That's when they start getting interested again. So I think we're almost at the tipping point where we're going to be seeing these overbought conditions mean a little bit less on Bitcoin. Let's see if they're, they're in a similar condition on our gold. Weekly time frame nearing overbought conditions. We can see where that came into play here. So we have RSI resistance to be concerned about again, 67.97. 67.79 is where we are on the weekly time frame for RSI. So you can plot that level. Uh, don't have enough data for back burner on that one. On the daily time frame, we already overbought. We are our we are already overbought. But again, we can go plot horizontal RSI resistance. Last time we got up to 73.97, we pulled back. We're approaching that level now. Four hour time frame is overbought, same idea. Clearly, we're okay with spending some time above overbought conditions here. Let's get rid of that guy. And now we're just going to be looking for four hour higher lows. So the price becomes unsustainable the more we accelerate up like this. If we go parabolic, then absolutely it's unsustainable. It doesn't mean like we can accurately predict at any point where that parabel par parabolic, parabol parabolic levels will reach. Uh, we can look at some levels like mark out some horizontal resistances, but ultimately it's how much interest can there be. There's more sense in trying to identify slowdown and use stair step patterns and uh, price action on, on sub time frames to look for hesitation in the market than it is to just try to say it's unsustainable. Let's short it now. What we can look for is the development of trends, right? If we have a four hour time frame, I would suspect that we are a pretty well, if we haven't already exceeded that level, I'd be kind of surprised. Yeah. If we would have to come down in the next hour and 18 minutes of consolidation to stay in a, a body trend where we draw that on the tops of our greens and the bottoms of our reds. So yeah, we are extended. Four hour hourly time frame is extended as well. Clearly overbought, clearly not caring too much. And on the 50 minute time frame, uh, we can see we are in 15 minute consolidation mode. As long as we're over EMA 12, bulls are in control. Looking for hourly inside bars, support, 1955. Can bulls keep going? Absolutely they can. So we're looking for those that sign of weakness. When does the hourly time frame lose it? When do 50 minute bulls lose their EMA 12? Even when they do, we have back burner trades setting up. Lots of potential here. Need a little bit more bear exhaustion and I'd like to see that coming into Bitcoin as well. Speaking of Bitcoin, how long do we have left? Two minutes, two minutes left? Nope, 17 minutes left in our four hour time frame. Cool. All right, uh, we did have a request for oil. Let's go take a look at that real quick. Here's another example of peaking above and coming back down. We broke 80.57, lack of buying pressure, and then bears poured on. We are in uh, overbought, oversold conditions, and bulls just don't seem to care very much. So we triggered a little bit of a technical bounce the first time we dropped below that level, and then that emphasis really starts to slow down. I don't like to hit overbought and then hit overbought again, then hit overbought again. The first time you hit an overbought condition and they see a bullish response, that's really your best bet. Four hour time frame really looks like a bear flag uh, is trying to follow through right now. So we have higher highs and yeah, higher lows by four cents looking to follow through. We've got a drop on the 50 minute time frame and bear is still in control. Nice bounce. Room for higher lows over 65, 19, but ultimately bears are still in control in a pretty big way. I would need to see a pretty substantial trend change down here, and I would be scaling out pretty, pretty quickly on any long positions to be protective, trying to get to break even as quickly as possible because, yeah, we are, we are pretty oversold, um, and it doesn't reek of strength to me right now. We also need to consider the fact that gold is a it's a historical bear play when we are looking at volatile or economic economically uncertain times. Um, it's really kind of simple. The way I have come to understand it is if people are spending less money, they are traveling less, they are not buying less gas. Therefore, the demand for oil decreases and drops during historically economically uncertain times. OK, so. That may be the first little hint of that 
as to which we're seeing. And that sort of bias and that mentality has me being protective of long positions, which I always am. Okay, we have looked at that. Let's take a quick glance at NatGas. NatGas is a lot of fun a couple of weeks ago and has been in the daily downtrend since then. We have one dollar and 96 seven cents is our support and perhaps a bit over here in the two dollars and 34 one cents we're hitting that level now and we can see if we got ourselves probably big four hour downtrend yeah so four hour bulls managed to get to a higher high but just not holding on to it so four hour bears remain in control good contender for a little trend line if you want to try drawing that guy but i guess we've opened it up with that high so this is a problem try to draw this trend line like this you're way too far away for that to be useful and then you drag that parallel line up. Sure, it works there, but we're so far away. Something to keep on your charts, I suppose, but four hour bears and daily bears, and frankly, weekly bears in control of natural gas. All right, I got 50 minutes left. I need to take a look at some tickers. And let's start with the chart guys, because those are my guys. Uh, Chris wants to look at LLY. I know Chris isn't watching, but he did request this ticker. And he wanted to look at XLV first. So XLV, healthcare sector. We're looking for monthly higher lows over 119.95. And this is where Chris wanted me to start. And we have areas of range high and uh, hopefully range lows, right? On the weekly time frame, increasing bear pressure. We can see that picking up with the expanding ranges of our candlesticks and the increasing volume. This is nice bull volume for a potential low right potential volume climax and at this point when you see volume on an uptrend suddenly spiking or downtrend all it is is like one check mark check mark in a box of what should be several different indicators for potential reversal this by itself means nothing it means nothing more than we had a bunch of volume cool daily time frame still in a downtrend just above our ema 12 former area support or back under that level so we are looking for what? Daily lower lows under 123.63, four hour time frame, an ever so slight uptrend. We need to establish higher lows pretty quickly. All right. So what I need to see in order to be more interested as a bull would be for either the price to come down closer to that low and really carve back up and break this high or for the bulls to break that 129.70 and then set at higher low. It's those higher lows that I'm really interested in. Right? If you're looking for a long position, you shouldn't be buying up here. You should be buying at the speculated low. Like our little riot play. We shouldn't be buying at the high day. We should be speculating where those lows come in. That gives us the most profit potential and gives us a mess opportunity for that little elastic band of price to bounce up and to start covering our bases. All right. Let's go take a look at LLY. So if we are going to get that trend change, what do we need to see for LLY? Out of the gate, LLY in the daily time frame looks a little bit better. It's bought itself a lot of room for daily higher lows. We still in a weekly downtrend, EMA 12 touched and rejected. Daily time frame and double bottom. So lots of room for consolidation. Daily stair step is active. So we'll be seeking a daily higher low over 309.32. Four hour time frame. Look at not very well defined wedge, but just look at the range size decreasing. So I'd like to see that break bearish, get that daily higher low. So let's say, let's look for a daily higher low in the realm of 321. We have some former support, former resistance in that level. So 319.88. If we see a wedge break, let's assume it looks like this. We had a break down there and we move up. That would be. A very nice spot for a daily higher low, okay? All right, Mr. F, Shopify. Let's do Apple first. Whoops. So Apple saw a great day yesterday, a little bit of an indecision day today. So we have a small spinning top. Ultimately, it's just a regular candlestick. It just shows us a little bit of selling pressure and a little bit of buying pressure and a little bit of directionality, a little bit of consolidation after a few good days. So on the surface, it looks like a, a nice little level. We also have some daily resistances to watch. 156.33, 156.30. Poking over those levels, we can look at that as, you know, nice little zone. 
zone of control all the way up to this 157.38 level. Four hour time frame looks great. We're looking for four hour higher lows. Hourly time frame, a little bit of equilibrium. One, two, three, four. We'd love to see a fifth level here for us, but the larger time frames look pretty good. Daily is not quite overbought, so we're still in this little power band zone, and we're going to look for the bulls to stay above EMA 12 on the daily time frame. For our longer positions, if we want to be more conservative, we need to be over that 156.74 level. Now we're going to be paying particular attention to our NQ and our ability to form four-hour higher lows over here. What we want to see is the rest of the market breaking over that 12,018 level in conjunction with Apple achieving its goal of breaking over, let's call it 157. And closing confidently over this area that has been historically giving us a lot of selling pressure. But on the four-hour time frame, it looks pretty good. 15-minute time frame is just a choppy day. As we know from our internals, not a lot of support for the bulls. And Apple just makes up such a big chunk. NVIDIA. The upgrade today, a lot of selling pressure coming in. We've got a reversal doji on the daily time frame. Weekly is overbought, so I'll be really hesitant to get into long positions. And we've got ourselves, uh, yeah, daily uptrend. And like this is what we don't like to see. Big old, call this an uh, abandoned baby pattern. So gap up. Look at all of the effort applied to this run, and then how much more would be needed to just jump and get this last little gasp of strength into daily overbought conditions. This is like ideal place to start like taking some profits. Um, so in order to maintain this sort of approach, bulls have a lot of room. Uh, no, let's call it this one. Let's call this, uh, 233.06. We're looking for daily higher lows over that EMA 12 ideal place for that to happen. Four hour time frame, pretty cooking hourly time frame. not seeing bearish divergence, but EMA 12, if we lose that one, then I'm going to be looking for some daily consolidation because that would tell me that these bulls have been just desperately trying to hold on but they haven't been able to do it yet okay i'm going to go through all of the youtube questions after i'm done my chart guys questions okay so i will get to it i just gotta help out these guys all right keggers you did go all in i remember you told me 38 38804 how are we doing with that Hmm. 38804 is what I said, huh? That's a pretty big bear move. Probably should have looked at the chart before I typed that one in. But I did give myself a buffer of $50, so I'm technically correct. All right, Osimo, you want to look at AMD. You got it. And awesome, if you send me a video of your unboxing of all of your fishing gear again, I will require you send it all to me because that was just one of the meanest things anyone's ever done. You send me a video of like this big haul of fishing tackle. And if you like fishing, like half the fun of fishing is like organizing your gear and getting ready for the season. Weekly time frame AMD gorgeous, but Look where we are. We are in an area of highs where we got to be, we're extended. We're going to have to break this whole trend. It's going to be gone. That's why we don't connect two points of data. Um, in fact, what if we do this? That works out pretty well. It makes me feel better about it. Okay. So we are in an area where we could expect to see weekly high set and then look for weekly higher lows. Weekly is near overbought conditions. And the daily time frame is blistering hot as well. Daily stair step action. So I'm not looking to enter long positions at this point. I'm looking for reasons to take profits. On the daily time frame, it looks great. Uh, on our four hour time frame, we have our little four hour hourly low here. We've seen pretty minimal consolidation, but I'd be watching for a break of 95, 94, looking for hourly oversold conditions, a little bit of stair step action for some bounces. 
Yeah, but bulls just bulls are just like we're at that point where you throw the ball up and it just hasn't started coming down yet. And maybe, maybe it just stays there and continues on. We see that in sideways consolidation. But I'm very closely would be monitoring my profit. And if you haven't scaled out by now, uh, hopefully you consider doing it at least as always, as always to break even, but I'm sure Osmo, you you've taken care of some of that. 94, 90, 95, 94 is the hourly support below that. Uh, 94.45. But bulls are just ripping. CTLT. Catalent Inc. Okay. Well, Catalent Inc. had some good earnings, and we're trying to sort out a range following earnings. It's always a bit of fun to do. We have some historical levels of support resistance. So I just go back and look at this 68, 78. And then coming down here, if we plot that horizontal little level there, little zones of control, right? And now we are gapped up over and we're just trying to stay here. So this is not a particularly strong looking chart. We have an indecision day. We haven't really sorted out what we're doing in the weekly time frame. So if we go to that four hour and the daily, we're not gonna have any trends. We're just range bound, whoops, with like zero clarity, really. Look at our EMAs just messing up together. So if we're looking for long or short positions, what we wanna do is just zoom out a bit and say, okay, I got no idea what's gonna be happening in this, in this messy range. But I do know that we can determine when we've broken that range. Right now, bulls need to decisively break over 74.49. If they do that, then they will have established, <laughs> I don't wanna see a, even a daily trend. They'll establish a base of support in the daily time frame, some volume here, but beyond that, not a lot. So we need to break over 74.49 and get a daily higher low. This is a mess. Yeah, bit of a mess. Okay, can I show any Forex major that I trade? Um, I don't, well, you know what? Technically I do, I do trade. I go back and forth between US and Canadian dollars quite often. Uh, not for the purpose of trading, just regular currency exchanges for personal reasons. Um, but technically, I guess that's trading. We had a big weekly equilibrium. We broke out of it. So far, we've been holding this weekly level. 137. That was the level we want to hold. Daily time frame. We got to break over our one. Hold on. Was that? There's that last level. Here it is. Daily time frame broke bullish. Back tested holding now in a big old four hour equilibrium. So we are looking for the bulls to break. 138, 142. Our pattern to get here was bullish, so we look for continuation as the most likely outcome. Hopefully that helps a little bit, but yeah. Not a huge Forex guy. My friend Bennett has been doing a lot of Forex trading pretty successfully. He's in the chart, guys. But we don't have um, a huge Forex trading community, to be honest with you. Just something I've never needed to dabble into. Okay. All right, Mr. F has just posted a link. Economists discover that dozens of banks may face risks similar to Silicon Valley banks. Do we get our 38804? We're so close. You know what? I was considering like making a, a bet for you that I was going to do a push up for every penny that I was over. And then as I was typing it in, I'm like, no, that's like 200, possibly. 500 push-ups. You can barely do 10 push-ups. What are you thinking? Okay, let's go uh, into our YouTube friends and look at some tickers for you guys as well. Then uh, we will finish up the week. Thoughts on Google. Oops, Google. Google looks great on the daily time frame. Looking at highs, a weekly higher lows, higher highs. So technically in a weekly uptrend, target was 107.92. Daily time frame a little extended. So we're starting to look 
like potential highs, 108.18, bulls in control. Any signs of slowing down? Not yet. Four hour or higher lows, hourly time frame looking good. Let's maintain over EMA 12 and maybe even draw ourselves. Ooh, fancy little trend line. Maybe we can do something like that. Now we're gonna go down and grab this 91.80 level and see if that fits pretty well. It does. So staying in this pattern of behavior, ideally above EMA 12, we'll continue to have the bulls in control. Our RSI grinding on the hourly, but sustainable. On the daily time frame, not really showing any signs of slowing down. So Google looks great. Um, thoughts on the uranium sector? One push up for each like. Um, okay. Um, CCO. That's not right. CCO for uranium, right? Nope, did it again. Where is it? Kamiko. Hmm. So we have some, it's not an equilibrium, but we have a weekly lows of 28.98. So we're gonna look for as daily bears to get exhausted on the way down here. A weekly indecision candle took right at EMA 26. We'd love to close over that. So let's see if we can get a daily trend change here and then head back up to weekly highs. But we need that daily trend change in order to establish a weekly higher low. Right now, very indecisive. And we're right in the middle of our range. So we have no short-term trends that are going to be useful for us. And we need to find some of that daily direction before we can look for entering longs or, longs or shorts. Uh, the next play is going to be looking for daily lows in a bounce down in the range of 29 Mm-hmm. What else do we got? Hey, Tamazon. Gold in our lunar is bordering breakout. Yeah. I think I got all the tickers. Okay, let's do a quick wrap up of uh, how we finished our day. So Spy didn't hit our, our well, our range is quite high, as I said, plus or minus $50. Remember that today is dividend day, so SPY is a little bit lower. Imagine this little red candlestick, just a teach higher. And all in all, we got ourselves an inside bar. So it could be a lot worse today. It certainly felt a lot more bearish in the, in the universe today than it did get represented here on the daily time frame. Uh, for our QQQ, a uh, nice little pop. And a nice little indecision candlestick. Wouldn't be surprised to see some daily consolidation following these multiple green days and today's indecision. All eyes again are going to be on our Russell for our equilibrium, our value area low for YWM, and our NQ's ability to hold for our EMA 12 in an attempt to break some key resistance levels. If we see pullback on our NQ's, keep an eye on your daily consolidation and inability to break our Apple's high, NVIDIA's four hour consolidation, and then Google's change of trend on that hourly time frame. All right, uh, you shouldn't be bored over the weekend, but if you are, go take a look at our Bitcoin. We've got a four hour bull flag. Mm, ooh, look at that. Pull them back. Okay, our four hour inside bar is set now, again. And look, we're open just below, and now we're coming back down. All right, our last little tidbit. If we come down and break 26,307, and we don't see just a rush of volume and profit taking, watch out for a move back up into a bull flag pattern. Ethereum, daily time frame bull flag breakout. 1784 that's our high all right guys that is it for this week i hope you had a wonderful one it was great to spend it with you chart people and really enjoy doing the public streams with you guys as always if you have any questions you can reach me on twitter where did i put that bad boy twitter at chart guys jason that's me I'm also going to be pestering you guys about my Twitch eventually.
because we're the chart guys are also on Twitch and Trading View. And of course, you probably know YouTube. But if you want the real meat and potatoes, check us out at chartguys.com, where we've got a huge community of probably the greatest people that I've ever met. And I like them as traders and as friends. And it's just such a great community of positive people. It's great. That's it for this week. I'll see you all Monday.